Please be advised that everything in my video is purely for entertainment purposes. These are purely my thoughts and opinions and are subjective. I must advise you to please do your own research. All media users found on the public domain and are fair use and fair dealings. Hey, told you I'll be back. So um, I've obviously filmed two videos in the same day. I just had to shoot out, as I said. Um, I know you guys sometimes wonder why it takes me so long between videos, but these videos do take so much time. I film myself on my phone, and then I have to edit it and cut out all of the stuff where I've gone blah, 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 pronounce words wrong, forgot stuff, I have to add in stuff. And then once I've edited it, I then have to download it to my laptop, and then I use editing software on there, and that's where I add the media. My laptop is not the quickest, as I've said several times. So all in all, like when you watch a, I don't know, say an 18 minute video, I could have filmed 35 minutes of me rambling, got that cut down to 20, <laughs> then uploaded it. And then obviously then made some for more edits and then add in the media. It does take time. So this is why sometimes there's a couple of days between videos. And uh, this is also why I don't do them over the weekend in general, just because it's the only time I get to see my husband now. And uh, we try and get out and do stuff. So uh, the running's going okay. I'm, I'm doing my third run of week five today, which is the 20 minute run. I'm a little bit <laughs> nervous about it. 20 minutes of straight running. So it's nine weeks in total I've got to complete it. I've also changed up my diet a little bit. It's the Fast 800. Um, I know it sounds crazy and I'm probably sure you're going to have lots of you fitness guys and stuff that are going to be going, oh my God, you can't eat 800 calories a day whilst working out, blah, 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 blah. But it's only a short term fix. You only do it for two weeks and then you only have 800 calories a day twice a week. So I'm going to see how it goes. I do need to lo lose weight. Um, you guys are so complimentary towards me and I really don't deserve the compliments half the time. But I am definitely a couple of stone over where I need to be to be healthy for myself and where I used to be. As I'm getting older, I'm nearly 40. My dad died of complications due to diabetes. So, I, you know, I get checked. I've already got an underactive thyroid. I need to take care of myself and I just want to feel better about myself. But it's good to have these goals. So anyway, um, that's enough about me. Let's get on with it. So speaking of restrictions being lifted, we're beginning to see the royals out and about again. We've had Prince William, we've had Charles, we've had Camilla, we've had the Princess Royal. So Prince William has gone to visit the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Ambulance crew, um, gone to thank them, see how they're coping with everything, and just had a general sort of chit chat with them. It's nice to see William out and about again, and I have thoroughly enjoyed seeing the Zoom chats that him and Catherine and all of the royals have done. And I hope that even when the restrictions are actually completely lifted, that they kind of do it a bit more, actually. I think it's great. I mean, it gives you such an opportunity to talk to people all over the world. But Zoom has literally enabled people, all of us, to talk to people a lot more. And um, I definitely think, as I've said before, it gives a really nice side to the royal family. You see so much more of a personable side to them. So most importantly, which I should have mentioned first in all of my videos, but I basically crossed the page over, was on the 13th of June. It was the Queen's official birthday. Now, normally we have Troopin' of the Colour. I love Troopin' of the Colour. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, we get to see, obviously, all of the members of the royal family. You get to see the balcony, but it's just the general kind of public all get involved. There's huge kind of parades and marches up in London. It's lovely, and everyone's kind of like, oh, I wonder what Catherine's going to be wearing. Plus the fact, because of the scandals that have gone on over the past, like, I don't know, a couple of months, it's almost like getting excited watching reality TV shows because it's going to be who's going to stand next to who on the balcony? Who's going to avoid who? So there was a one plus side to um, Trooping of the Colour being banned was the fact that we didn't get to see a couple of people's certain smug faces that we no longer wish to see on the um, on the balcony personally. So um, what did they do? Well we actually got to see pictures of the Queen. There was a small military ceremony held at Windsor. So the Queen was there. We got to see the Queen. She looked incredibly happy. It was she looks actually a lot healthier. I guess we forget that the Queen does actually still do a lot of engagements when you think how old she is. And she must be definitely well rested now, but she looked like she really thoroughly enjoyed the kind of mini parade that she got. I thought she looked gorgeous in that colour. I'm hoping what it does mean is the money that they saved from this year can go towards a 
bigger, bigger party next year for Trooping of the Colour, where we will get to then see all three of the Cambridge children, which I personally can't wait for. I just, I, I love watching these kids grow up. They've just got so much character and personality. So Charles and Camilla are also out of lockdown. They have been seen meeting key workers in Gloucestershire. Uh, Charles doing his normal Nana stay greeting. I personally really like this as a greeting. It's used in yoga. Um, I think it's a nice way to say hello to people and thank you. So again, Charles and Camilla and all of the key workers, you can see everyone is sticking to the, you know, the social distancing guidelines. It does seem strange to see people like this, but to be honest with you, I'm not a claustrophobic person in tight spaces. I'm a claustrophobic person in crowds and I hate, hate strangers being so close to me that they bump them into me and touching me. That's why all my shopping's done online. I get very, very flustered. And once I start getting a hot flush, I run the very high risk of starting to get a panic attack. So I, I hope this person is social distancing to a degree, at least when you're out in public with strangers, actually stays in place. Obviously not with your family. Camilla and Charles have both said that's the one thing they have had a chance to see their grandchildren but they both missing the fact that they haven't been able to hug and cuddle them which I'm sure resonates with so many families all around the world um I can't remember the last time I gave my mum a cuddle so I personally just can't wait for that moment to come back and I hope there will be floods and floods of glorious beautiful pictures on social media to cheer us all up so you know my Jessica video that I did um, a couple of days ago, for those of you that have seen it, you know, I spoke about the clickbait articles. I'm laughing because this one really makes me laugh. My cheeks are beginning to hurt. The clickbait articles. The ones with the headlines are just so ridiculous that it is purely just to get people to click on them. I don't even click on them, they're so stupid anymore. This one really does take the biscuit though. So Camilla has gone out to um, meet these care workers and key workers in uh, Gloucester, Gloucestershire with Charles and um, basically they've turned around and said that she was copying Meghan's style with the dress that she wore. Yeah, the dress that Meghan wore when she went to the US Opens. Um, the only similarity that I can see with this dress is it's blue and um, I just really, really hope <laughs> that Camilla didn't sit there and Sharon stone one of her friend's husband like Megan did at the games to Serena's husband. As I said, it just really, really tickled me. So our lovely Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, you know, one of my personal favourites, um, she has been out and about seen again volunteering. She has been helping packing food, parcels, prescriptions to be sent out to the vulnerable. Um, we get to see lots of pictures of Sophie actually being out and about. I think she's been the only royal that we have seen that's been actually out doing stuff with people I guess I don't know whether it's just because she was in the age safety bracket she's followed very tight controls she had a royal doctor with her at all times I don't know but I do love the way that Sophie again she doesn't pose for pictures she's not interested she's very much like the princess royal she's she's there to talk to the people or to help to get on with the job that is in front of her it's not about posing and taking pictures the same can be said for William and Catherine the Princess Royal herself, Princess Anne, she has also been visiting, um, I don't know where it, where she went actually, to be fair, but it looks like she's visiting people at Army Barracks. So she's there to say hello, you can see her speaking to some of the soldiers, but the most important part of this is the fact that she drove herself. She does not like to be driven, she drove herself, though she doesn't have a mass security team. Now bear in mind, as I told you guys in a couple of videos ago, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, is the only member of the current royal family to have literally had a massive kidnap attempt where her police officer, her driver and her actual bodyguard were all shot in front of her as a crazed gunman tried to pull her out of the car and I love the fact that she's still no fuss, no drama, no dramatics, no I don't want all these millions of pounds of security, bear in mind she is Charles's sister, she is the Queen's daughter and uh, she just drives herself around. You've got to love her, she definitely is absolutely one of the most inspiring royals for a modern royal, the way that she's brought up the kids, the way she didn't have titles for Zara and Peter and yeah I just really really like her so again she's another one that I really do like to see. Princess Anne is just a bit of a legend really. So speaking of legends, I am actually going to go off the topic of the royal family briefly here and pay my respects to a legend, Bob, who has sadly passed. I will get emotional on this, but it's to do with a street cat named Bob. Um, it was actually made into a film in 2016. It's a true story um, with Luke Treadaway, not to be confused with his twin brother, Harry, and, and Bob the street cat. The story is about James Bowen, who was a recovering drug addict. Uh, he was in some sort of shelter houses and one night 
he found an injured cat in the hallway and he rescued the cat and um, they started hanging around together all the time. He took the cat everywhere with him. He was busking on the streets. He was selling the big issue and um, he basically became famous. The cat became famous and they wrote a film about it, as I said. James himself is fully recovered and I just think that this, this story was such a beautiful story. Look, we're totally welling up, such a sap with animals. But um, yeah, you just, 14 years is a wonderful age. There is no great age to lose a pet, but if you haven't seen the film, watch the film. It truly is wonderful and inspiring. And it just reminds, God, this is pathetic. <laughs> You've got no any ideas how many takes I've just tried to get this off my chest about this cat. What's that? But it really is a wonderful film if you get the chance to watch it. So um, my love does go out to James and um, rest in peace, Bob. And it's just, it's a story that reminds us that sometimes pets find us rather than we finding them. So um, I'm going to get on to my final bit before I cry again. <laughs> So what have the dramatic duo, I really shouldn't be saying that after that lot of, lot of theatrics, it's genuine though, speak to me about animals, that's it, whoosh. Um, but what have the dramatic LA duo been up to? Strangely, right, today is the 17th of June that I'm filming, this will be released on the 18th, as it stands at this moment in time. Nothing. I literally have nothing to report. No weird stories. Um, it's only, to be fair, it's only one o'clock in the afternoon for me here. So there has been nothing that I can see on social media apart from normal rehashed old stories. But I've literally got nothing to report. So we're going to take a moment to just enjoy the fact that this video has got nothing to do with the, um, with the dramatic duo. So that is it for me on this video and um, no doubt it won't stay silent for very long. There is way too much drama surrounding um, surrounding that part of LA really for something not to come out within the next 48 hours. But that's it for me on this one. Tell me what you think. So I will see you guys in a few days. I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the piece of not hearing about the Harkles at the end. It's very rare isn't it? So uh, take care for now and I'll see you guys very soon. If you like my video please remember to like and subscribe. Please angry typists, you will be blocked, so save your fingers the time. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.